take some plans, take some lumber, some plywood, some epoxy, a few tools, and some help from a friend. And what do you have? You have the boat that David and I built. This is the story of how I built an Eco 6 sailboat designed by Bern Kohler and with help from my new friend, David Thatcher, in New Zealand. Bern Kohler started designing multi-hull sailboats in 1979. His background in aeronautical design is apparent in the wide assortment and various sizes of designs that he produces. The Eco 6 design is an, an expanded version of his Eco 5.5. It provides considerably more accommodation in the cabin with only a relatively small increase in length. Mr. Kohler's designs are available either through his own uh, website, K-Design, or through the Duckworks website. I met David Thatcher on the forum of uh, builders of Bern Kohler's designs. David is an experienced sailor and has built many boats in his lifetime. I sent David my first question before I'd even started building on my Eco 6, and he came back very quickly with a very full and complete answer. Once we started, we ended up exchanging emails almost weekly, sometimes daily, as, as my build progressed. I'm forever grateful for all that assistance. Thank you very much, David. Much appreciated. Preliminary work began in the summer of 2022 in June and July with the construction of bulkheads. I first moved into my rented workshop in uh, August. The strong back was uh, set up and uh, bulkheads were attached. Didn't take long before you could start to see the shape of the hulls. Rough cut Douglas fir was used as uh, the dimensional lumber in most of the build. Naturally, uh, scarfing was required to get uh, six meter long lengths for the stringers. My good friend Ken came and helped me mark the first sheets and cut them for the planking process to begin. Thank you, Ken. I also decided to take the designer's advice and pre-coat the sheets of plywood with epoxy before doing any cutting. This in the long run saved a lot of time. The planking went ahead very well, although the last section towards the bows presented some real challenges. Plywood can be bent, but it doesn't like to be tortured. But that's what you need if you want to end up with hulls that will slice through the water and look like they mean business. By October, the hulls were ready for fiberglassing and another very good friend, Bruce, came and gave me a day of his help and uh, we finished both hulls. Thank you, Bruce. I decided to follow David's example and uh, rather than install the uh, dagger boards, which the original plan calls for, I have uh, added optional keels and along with them, skakes.
with the hulls inverted, I went ahead and fared them and decided to prime them at the same time. With that work completed, I enlisted some help and we rolled the hulls over. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Les. And now we see the boat in its full width uh, size. In November, work started on the bridge deck. That required scarfing full-length sheets of plywood. That was something that I had not worked on before. That took quite a bit of learning. But eventually we got the sheets scarfed and, and set up in place. Three tools were added to the boat building tool chest during this stage. A used belt sander, a borrowed power planer, and a mechanics creeper, which worked great for working upside down underneath that deck. With the bridge deck in place, work began on the upper bulkheads, including the aft beam. As that work continued, you could see the inside of the cabin beginning to take shape. This work once again that mechanic creeper sure came in handy. In December work focused mainly on the upper uh, cabin uh, bulkheads and especially the uh, bulkhead 3 which is the mast uh, support. Once the bulkhead 3 was in place, stringers could be applied. In December, I also worked on the forward beam. The forward beam has three lockers built into it. One will be used as an anchor locker accessible from outside. The other two lockers will be accessible from the cabin. Early in January, the single bunk in the port hull was uh, put in place. January is a good time also for doing a little of this and a little of that. I took David's advice and painted the hard to get to uh, compartments. I also changed the shape of the forward uh, port uh, to something that I liked better. I added a shallow locker to the port bunk and added a window to it as well. Work began on the bowsprit. I mentioned my boat building tool chest a moment ago. Maybe a few words about that. Lots of tools that I have are quite optional. They make the job easier. There's a few that I've really grown to appreciate. Some are hand tools, some are power tools. Each boat builder will find the ones that work the best for them. My extravagant addition this year was the epoxy dispenser I got from Michaels Engineering. It was well worth it in efficiency and accuracy. I was very happy to have it.
Work resumed in February on the bowsprit. Using a special Forstner bit, I set up my drill press so that I could drill a hole in the wooden part of the bowsprit in order to accommodate a carbon fiber tube which I'd acquired some time ago. Thanks for suggesting that setup, uh, Nate. It worked very well. In the last photo, you see the carbon tube inserted into the wooden bowsprit. The Eco 6 plans show a mini galley inside the cabin, but they don't provide any particular details on how to go about it. I uh, studied up David's example and uh, using many of the ideas that he used, I came up with my own version. One idea that was included was a custom built sink to fit into the counter. My friend Rick donated a stack of carbon fiber offcuts from his solar panel production and I was able to incorporate them into the mini galley using them for lightweight countertops. Thank you Rick. Another idea I borrowed from David was a corner cupboard in the port hull located beside where the composting toilet will go. The interior of the cabin was painted while it was still more easily accessible. A special primer went over the epoxy, followed by uh, several coats of high quality la acrylic latex paint. I even did some fancy technique painting on the floor. Plywood panels were scarfed for the side of the cabin and also for the roof. My friend Lance helped me attach those top panels. Thanks, Lance. I also turned my attention to the aft cockpit. Following David's example, combings were added to provide for a little bit more height and uh, enable the skipper to see over the cabin top. The building plans provide a method for building rudder blades using Okame plywood. The uh, Moranti marine plywood that I used for my build does not work so well with this method because it is too brittle. I had to come up with a new approach which did work in the long run, and I'm very happy with the results. A number of jobs were taken off the checklist in March. The uh, sink was drained to a through hull propane bottle was linked to the galley stove. An air vent was added to the cabin. Boarding steps were installed. And finally, rudder hinges were fabricated out of carbon fiber. In April, the companionway was fabricated. The side and aft ports were framed and the opening hatch on the roof was also installed. My sailing buddy Daryl, who had helped me one other time uh, with a fiberglass job on my last boat, came and the two of us glassed the top of the cabin. After that was done, the front uh, cross beam and the aft cockpit were, were fiberglassed. 
There are many ways of attaching trampolines to the front of a sailboat. This is the approach that I took. This gave me an opportunity to experiment with G-Flex from West Systems to see how well it sticks aluminum to wood. And it seems to be doing the job so far. May was a time for attaching a variety of miscellaneous items. I started by locating a base for the rotating Hobie 16 mast and attaching it. Thank you very much, Dan, for that. The brackets for the self-tacking jib track were fabricated from carbon fiber. Again, thank you, Rick, for the carbon fiber, and they were attached. The bowsprit also was attached. May was also a time for priming and painting. The System 3 epoxy primer was used and their two component polyurethane paint was also used for the top coat. For the accent colors, I went to my local home hardware store and bought their high quality acrylic latex paint. With the painting done, I turned my attention to cutting out the polycarbonate for the ports. 3M VHB tape was used to attach them. The aft opening window was also installed. There's a lengthy story about acquiring the mast for this sailboat, but I'll spare you that long story. Suffice it to say that I'm using a shortened rotating Hobie 16 mast with a new mast head that I have fabricated. Commercial boat trailers that are on the market are not well suited to carrying the Eco 6 sailboat. So my good sailing buddy Daryl came to the rescue. He is a much better welder than I am and between the two of us over a, a week uh, of welding in the hot sun we came up with a, a, a trailer that is going to do a great job of hauling uh, the Eco 6 for wherever we want to go sailing. Thank you Daryl. Beers on me the next time we go sailing. With the trailer built, it was time to get the boat out of that rented workshop. Again, friends came to my rescue. Bruce arranged for a, a crane truck and Daryl came along to provide some assistance as well. The crane operator displayed his considerable skill on the crane and it wouldn't, wasn't too long before we had the boat on the trailer and heading uh, back to my home. Thanks again to Bruce and to Daryl. With the boat out in the sunshine, it was time to stand back and, and appreciate this design. What a great looking boat, Mr. Kohler. You did a wonderful job of designing it. David designed and built his own composting toilet for his Eco 6. 
His design looked so good, I decided to make one pretty much the same as what he had done, with only small uh, differences. I didn't copy everything that David did. I got my materials from sailright.com and sewed up my own trampolines. You remember those rudder blades that I made several months earlier? Well, it was time to get them uh, installed on the boat. That meant uh, fabricating uh, boxes to accommodate them, uh, carbon fiber uh, hinges, and uh, laminated tillers and tiller arms. It took a lot of trial and error messing around to figure out the optimum location for everything. Things are somewhat complicated by the traveler that goes in the back on that aft beam. And uh, so that was uh, a lot of head scratching and messing around to come up with the final location. With the boat out of the garage and now subject to weather, I discovered I had a problem that I had not anticipated. The hatches were not waterproof. Not only were they had faulty gaskets, they were faulty design. So I abandoned them and built my own the way I should have to start with. Sometime in August, my granddaughter Kira helped me install a solar panel that my friend Rick had built. Thank you, Kira. Apparently, boat building also requires some electrical abilities. And this was one that uh, one area that really challenged me, connecting uh, everything up. And uh, still not working quite right, but in the new year it will be. The end of sailing season was starting to close in on me and it was time to get that hardware installed. More learning curves as we figured out what to do with all these various pieces that I had purchased over time. If you're deciding on non-skid on your boat, I can highly recommend Kiwi Grip. It was easy to install and it looks really good. Sailing friends gathered at the Harbour Marina in Elbow on September 19th to help me launch the boat. In a scenario, a scenario which is common on such days, things did not go quite as planned. We discovered the sailmaker had, just, had substituted four slugs on the mainsail, preventing the sail from being properly hoisted, and therefore the boat could not be sailed. No matter. I was encouraged to at least dip the boat in the water, which we did. After a brief loop in the marine harbour, the prerequisite champagne was poured to christen Zephyr's Delight. I expressed my gratitude for the many wonderful friends who helped during the build and during the launch. Special mention meant, went to my partner Lily, who displayed great patience during the 15-month building period. After the christening, Zephyr's Delight was returned to her trailer. We wait now for spring to return when we will launch again and check out the Eco 6 under sail. Stay tuned, more videos to follow after the 2024 sailing season.